get the mind to settle down, you have to talk to it. Remind it of why it's a good thing to be here, a good thing to be with the breath, how you don't have to be responsible for anything else right now. Take some joy in that fact. Give it pep talks when it's discouraged. Rein it in when it's getting a little bit too carried away. So finally it can settle down and you can stop the talking. The trick, though, is to engage in right speech with yourself. Wrong speech would be, think about this for just a minute, it won't take up too much of your time. It's a lie. One thought leads to another, leads to another, and you end up who knows where, in the middle of Siberia. Other times when the mind is settling down and there's a part of the mind that's afraid of concentration, so it tries to break things up, and that's divisive speech. Harsh speech, of course, is when you tell yourself you're a miserable meditator, see, you can't even get the mind to settle down with one or two breaths. And there's idle chatter, everything else that fills the mind that's not related to what you're doing right now. And it can be about the Dharma, it can be about all kinds of things. And John Lee has an interesting observation, which is that when you're talking to people and they're not ready for really high-level Dharma yet, if you're talking about high-level Dharma, it's idle chatter. It's not really relevant to what they're doing, what they need to do. So you've got to sort through all the voices in your mind and listen only to the voices of right speech. And let the wrong speech just go. You don't have to stop it, but you don't have to engage in it. This is one of the reasons we have to practice right speech outside, so we get used to knowing what kind of speech is appropriate, what, what's not. Remember that sign we have at the, the old guest house? The three questions the Buddha asked himself about his speech. Is it true? Is it beneficial? And is this the right time and place? When you learn how to hold to those, those standards in your external speech, then it's a lot easier to hold to them in your internal speech as well. The big problem, of course, is idle chatter. You notice that even though it's part of the path to say to avoid idle chatter, there's no precept against it, because if it were such a precept, we'd be breaking it all the time. It's so easy to slip into it because it's so aimless. With lies, you have specific aim. With harsh speech, with divisive speech, you have specific aims. But with idle chatter, your aims can be pretty, pretty vague. But you've got to learn how to be really strict with yourself. You're not going to say anything unless you have a purpose to what you want to say. Think of the Buddha's instructions to rule it before you say anything. Ask yourself, what's going to be accomplished by this? All too often we don't think before we speak. We open our mouths and then think later. And as John Fung used to say, when you have to think about what you said after you said it, that's usually a bad sign. Try to think first and ask those questions. Is this true? And even true things are not always beneficial or timely. So it has to pass all three tests, because after all, that's the kind of speech you want in your mind while you're meditating right now, making true observations about what's coming up in the mind, not hiding things from yourself. This is one thing that the mind does really well. You're sitting here with the breath, but there's already a part of the mind that's laid its plans. As soon as there's the slightest lapse in your alertness, they're going to take you someplace else. And part of you knows that. 
and then pretends that it doesn't know. That's the first quality we've got to develop in our internal speech, is truthfulness. What's actually going on in the mind? Are we all here? Are we all on board with being with the breath? If not, engage in some of those reflections that the Buddha recommends. Recollection, re reflections on not-self, on inconstancy, which we usually think are high-level insight. But he says it's useful to think about it before you want to get the mind to settle down, thinking about all the things that you could think about, and they're all going to pass away. And not really under your control. Why bother thinking about them? Then beneficial. Okay, there may be true things about what work needs to be done outside. And that something has to be planned for. Well, right now is not the time for that. Because you need something more than well planned out days. You need a mind that's, that's well trained, that has a sense of well being. You can close your eyes and just. Be content to be right here without having to think about it very much. Just think about how you want the mind to be still and how nice it is when there is a comfortable breath and how nicer it is when there is a more comfortable breath. That's beneficial in terms of the right time and the right place. That's When the Buddha is talking about that, he's just talking about the times to be gentle and pleasant with yourself, and the times to be a little bit more stern. Because there are times when the mind really just needs some reassuring. Like a child who's been beaten up. We go through life and get beaten up pretty badly. Maybe not physically, but the mind can get beaten up pretty badly, and it needs some something to soothe it. So if you're feeling discouraged, find some ways of getting the mind soothed. But the mind's just simply being ornery, and that happens a lot too. That's when you've got to be stern. This is where the Buddha would recommend recollection of death. Death could come at any time. According to the Wat Meta, social media apparently right now in Thai, the cell is on the verge of collapsing with the slightest little tremor. So whether that's true or not, the fact is that our bodies are designed in such a way that they don't when they decide to stop, they don't give any warning. Maybe a little blood clot gets in, into your leg someplace or into a lung, and then who knows where it's going to go, where it's going to get lodged. So you don't know how much time you've got. You do know you have right now. So you crack the whip and get to work. So work on your internal speech and work on your external speech as well. One of the reasons why we don't have a vow of silence around here is that you do need to talk to yourself in the meditation, but you need to talk well. And hopefully, as we're working in the monastery, what we say to one another will be helpful, will count as right speech. And you get an idea of what counts as the kind of things to talk about and what kinds of things not to talk about. If you go around being quiet all the time, you can get really obsessed about, about things. I've seen so many monks go into the forest in Thailand. They're off alone, and they get obsessed about some tiny little thing, because they don't have anybody to talk to. Give them a sanity check. So we talk about the work that needs to be done around the monastery. That's our sanity check. But anything beyond that, even if it's true, and it's not harsh, and it's not divisive, there's a lot of idle chatter that goes on. 
you know, we can recognize that and put a stop to it before it comes out of our mouths, then we'll be able to recognize it and put a stop to it when it comes into our minds. So try to develop right speech both inside and out. The life in the community will go better, and you'll find that you'll be able to talk yourself more effectively into getting the mind to settle down. Because this is the speech that leads to stillness. That's the skillful speech. <laughs>